name is Vila Beck, and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And uh, we are in a whole new world, baby. A whole new world. I think this is going to be a new ridiculous segment on Fridays. Uh, yeah, I think so. Because we, like, yeah, the world's changed, baby. The world has changed mostly for the for the worst. <laughs> mostly, but one way it's changed. For the way better, and I mean in the last few months, is that we are living in the world of Russell T. Davis's Doctor. We are firmly in the Rusty Davis RTD2 RTD era right right now. No, we're not firmly in. We have, we have to see something first. But that's what all the production is. As a Doctor Who geek, as a Doctor Who fan, that's the world we're living in. We're not living in the Chris Chibnall world. The Chris Chibnall world was awful right oh the christian doctor no world was a terrible place if you loved it god bless you i hated it, it was a terrible place a terrible place for many many reasons firstly doctor who was awful it was unwatchably bad it was so terrible uh if you did the normative thing when you first came on and went oh that was awful and you went onto facebook or twitter remember that you used to go on facebook yeah or twitter well i do now and about much more that now elon musk there but uh, and you went Oh my gosh, this is awful, right? So then it turned out the people that Chris Chibnall brought in to talk to who yeah, in that era were all, all also awful people, right? And they would gaslight you and go, you're a bigot and a racist. I'm like, I just said this TV show was shit. What do you want at me? And I love this TV show. Like, no, you're evil. And like, do you remember that? You probably don't because the we, human beings need to like live in peace and harmony and happiness. And we, tr we try not to live in like, depressing times of reality and that was a depressing time right it it was worse than you remember okay and it's only been a few months ago it, and it's still going on but it was worse than you remember that was the second but the thing and i remember no, three four I, mean, I know the third fourth fifth six whatever it is right the thing that i didn't like was there was no news right there was nothing to talk about that excited me that that's that should be the case. there was news but firstly Chibnall had no idea how to market whatsoever, and uh, uh, Rosie Davis knows how to market, baby. Oh, my God. He knows what's going down. He knows what he's doing there. Man, I hope the show's as good, at the, as, good as the marketing. Uh, 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 he had no idea how to market and no idea how to let him... I mean, do you remember there was set of uh, there was a uh, location photos? That's because what we do, right? Of uh, Weeping Angels and Sontaras and everything. And then he's, he treated like... Six, eight to eight months later, that uh, Stephen Moffat mentioning the Weeping Angels are going. I mean, given that you're using his creations to try and like get people to watch your piece of shit show, right? But uh, um, he he mentioned it like on Instagram promoting his piece of shit show, and Criminal was like, "Eh, spoilers. We all fucking knew, right? There was no news, and certainly no news that anybody was excited about. The only news was things you could take the piss out of, really, and there was a lot of that. But man." Oh, right. So look, I, I, we don't live in that world anymore. We live in the Russell T. Davis world where uh, uh, there's lots of news and lots of news I'm excited about, right? Lots of news I'm excited about. Now, I, I have cards on the table, as I always try and give them. I, I, I think the new era is going to be very good. I'm very excited for the new era, right? I really am. I think Shooting Up was... Uh, um, I think it's going to be not just good. I think it's going to be extraordinarily good. Now, I'm going into it wanting that to happen i went into whitaker wanting to like it expecting to like it and it took me a good few episodes to go Ooh, but we live in a different world now again you know that was uh, that was before the last jedi right it took me about a week to realize the last jedi was awful it took us what about eight, six months to a year to remember to realize that the force awake not the force awakens What's the name of that first one? The Phantom Menace, right? The Phantom Menace wasn't much got. It took about a long time to be able to say that. Uh, um, if you watch it again, now the special effects are so dated. Oh, my God. Whereas if you go to, uh, uh, you know, you can watch the original cut, you know, the original version of Star Wars. It's not dated. It's re That's really crazy. I mean, yeah, a little bit dated, but it's not. It, I mean, because the, the energy of the story carries you through. I, I mean, I prefer the... Uh, um, 
you know, the 90s version of 2000. They, I, you know, I, I, I have my own version of Star Wars that I like. But yeah, that, I, I digress. I digress. We're in, uh, we're in the room. We're in the uh, Rossi Day So there's a lot of news to go over uh, and a lot happening. And it's just like a scattergun effect. I don't think this is going to stop. Right, I think this is going to go on and on and on and on. So I think we, on Fridays we're going to do a wrap up, like a, a, a wrap up of the, you know, that was the week that was, which is what I'm almost certainly going to call this video. That was the week that was. Yeah, you know, uh, I think that yeah, you know, that's what we're going to call it. And I think this is going to go every uh, you know, every week. We're probably going to go over stories that we've seen before because again, this is more of a weekly retrospective. And then there's some articles as well, which which, which I probably won't have time to get to, uh, even in my live streams as well. I I always try and get things, and I just never maybe because I'm always rabbiting on about other things could be that mate could be that got more, more rabbit than sainsbury's you know I've never eaten rabbit by the way I, I yeah i can't because well, i can if i choose to but i choose not to because uh i'm religious jewish and where uh the uh the rabbit is not a kosher animal right we, we don't eat rabbit. never eaten rabbit right so uh uh no idea what it's like <laughs> How do I start talking about that? You know, I should really watch these videos back to work out how, what my trains of thought work. You know, I think in the future, scientists are going to uh, uh, pull, out, pull out this channel and try and work out, yeah, uh, like, what the hell was he thinking? It'll be, it'll be a major, major uh, uh, area of study in the, in the 32nd century. But, you know, you know, they could just bring me back to life and I can tell them. Anyway, I digress. Uh, 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 like, share, subscribe, all those things. Are good. Oh, hey, one more thing. Gah, gah. One more thing to in the introduction. Uh, um, I, as you know, I'm very excited for the new era of Doctor Who. It might suck, right? It might be awful. I haven't seen it yet. It might be terrible, and there's uh, uh, good indications and bad indications. The yeah, bad indications of Disney Plus, for example. Although Guardians of the Galaxy was great on that, so I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I think if you're somebody with talent, you can probably squeeze like in there that that everybody would like you know uh, uh but yeah there there are a lot of indicated people are very upset about yasmin finn's casting uh, uh i'm really not i'm really not as long as you know as long as she, that that the it's a character right as long as i don't know what the right pronouns are as long as yasmin plays a character right which i don't think uh uh anybody did in what's that thing that the audio thing they did was awful uh, redacted i don't think anybody paid a character redacted other than a completely vile disgusting character i got about four or five episodes in there no, three or four i couldn't go anymore they're all all the people in it was so awful and so like there was nothing good about it that i wanted to to, to hang around with the, the, these main characters who were so proud of being trans i'm like oh, man man I, i've never been proud of anything uh, uh as these people are proud of being trans that good for you good for you i mean it seems to me you're just putting on a skirt but okay you know uh, uh, uh that doesn't seem to be like you you got the nobel prize but okay okay whatever whatever but as long as he has been playing a character i don't think russell Lee davis can write things that aren't you know without without it being a character right also, as long as it reflects the society that's trying to entertain, which is a big mistake, right? Which uh, is going going on in media right now. You know, like Star Trek Discovery. Weirdly, everybody in Starfleet's a woman, right? Like, well, eighty percent, right? Uh, do they explain this? No, no, because women are stunning and brave. That that's basically it. Women are just stunning and brave. Uh, uh, um, so, so there are good indications, bad indications. We don't know. We don't know. I'm going on the uh, premise that I think it's going to be good. Uh, however, I'm also going on the premise that it was made in uh, uh, 2022, 2023, which has not been, you know, a, a ground zero for good entertainment. Let's just say that. Fine. Like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are fantastic. Thank you very much. I am very grateful for you liking, sharing, subscribing. And once again, this video is going out on Friday, right? And I... I've screwed up, right? <laughs> Once again, I've screwed up uh, uh, because I haven't planned which uh, uh, out of print Doctor Who novel is going out tomorrow on my Substack. My Substack is my email newsletter. I send out free stuff all the time, right? And I never highlight it, so nobody clicks to join up. So I normally put out a Virgin Missing Event, uh, Virgin New Adventure, Missing Adventure, BBC previous Doctor, Eighth Doctor event, well, one of those books, right? I normally put one of those out as a PDF. On my sub stack. It's out of print, I figure. If they ever bring it back in print, I wouldn't do that. But it's out of print. Eh, 
go and enjoy it. But I really should do, uh, I should really just talk about that, right? Like, oh, you got to read this book. And then people sign up. But again, 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 uh, 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 no. <laughs> I haven't done that. Like, share, subscribe, comment. So I need you to do it for me, right? Because I am shit at marketing. I need you, <laughs> okay? See, this is a, what they call a call to action. I need you to uh, uh, work it out. If you could like, share, subscribe, that'd be, that'd be lovely, is what I'm trying to say. That'd be lovely. Thank you very much. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think. Sign up my Substack in the email. Uh, no, in the, no, in the video notes. I've got that wrong all week, right? In the video notes is my Substack, which is my email newsletter. Oh, God, it's like three words. I've just got to get them in order, right? Uh, can't do that, right? Uh, 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 sign up for that, please. That would be good. Look, did you see my, my bloody information? Ever, I went in to try and get that information out. Can you can you click the link and sign up? That'd be lovely. Subscribe. Uh, uh, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. Also in the video notes. Also in the video notes. Man, that video notes. It's a treasure trove, man. It's a treasure trove. You want to look in there. Uh, uh, comment and let, you, let me know what you think. So the first thing we want to talk about is an article from just in the nick of time, just a week ago. Doink from BBC, uh, Radio Times, I should say, we can't overstate the importance of a disabled character in Doctor Who. Now, this was talking about Namal Shaban playing Syl. I'll be like, yeah, okay. But I don't know. I don't know. I, I, look, again, cards on the table. I live in Israel, right? Israel uh, um, is very handicap friendly, right? If, if that's the right word. Disabled, I thought, I don't know what the politically correct term, terminology is, but it's very handicap friendly. Why? Because spoke well. Everyone's, we have conscription. Everyone's supposed to go to the army. About forty percent of people don't. They, they they find ways out, right? Everyone goes to the army, which means there's a, a and we're a small country surrounded by uh, 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 countries that absolutely hate us and want to kill us. How do we know that? Well, because we're Jews. <laughs> it's like you ask your neighbour, "You a Jew? Yeah, I'm a Jew. Are you a Jew? Yeah, we're, we're all Jews." And and, and the thing is. Uh, when we've never, ever, ever, well, last couple of thousand years, haven't had a time we're not surrounded by people wanting to kill us, no matter where we were, right? Doesn't matter what we did, where we were. So that's basically it. So we've had a lot of wars, and people do national service. People go to the army, and they get injured. There's a lot. My, my next-door neighbor, right, in a wheelchair uh, from a uh, uh, from, from, uh, from his, uh, his army service, uh, uh, and so, but it's a very normative thing, right? And, and and so nobody wants to be disadvantaged. I actually have to tell you as well. Yeah, forget everything you see on the news. Israel's actually a very progressive country. <laughs> it really is. We're very, education's fantastic. If you want to find, you can just do the, you know, go go send your kid to school and they'll be fine. But if you have a kid that has a specific educational need, there is a school out there somewhere for them, being funded by the government. You just got to find it, right? Absolutely incredible. But also, we're very progressive in terms of uh, being being handicap friendly, right? Wheelchair access for everything. No, 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 be parks in handicap spots that don't need them, right? No, we just just a taboo. So it doesn't seem to me, uh, uh, and also representation in media. It's like it just doesn't seem to me that um, being handicapped is something that is uh, disparaged, right? I, I, no, I, I wouldn't encourage it, right? Listen, there are people doing weird surgeries all the time where, uh, you know, the little boys cutting off their bollocks or little girls uh, 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 cutting off their tits. You know, I wouldn't recommend that, okay? I'm not a doctor, but I wouldn't recommend it, right? Really think to have the healthy parts of the world. So who knows? If I say ha being handicapped is, uh, uh, you know, an encouraging, people might cut their legs off. Okay, okay. What? And that's how the world is, mate. I have to think of this stuff, right? So, I, again... I don't know the importance of handicap rights. I really genuinely do not know. I wouldn't want to say no, but in the same breath, like we've had so, so much of this over the last five years. Like, oh, black people need to be on screen because everybody hates them. Really? I don't know anybody hates black people because they're black people. I, mean, I don't. I don't. I've never been. I mean, I'm. I guess I must have known somebody sometime. It's like racism's a thing. But, uh, uh, you know, women, oh, women are... Uh, uh, and under no, they're not. My God, the most privileged people in the universe uh, ever. It's ridiculous. I mean, uh, uh, um, so I don't know if I believe, believe the narrative. And, uh, uh, you know, yeah, basically, I don't know. I don't know if I believe. And, and is, is this... Tokenism is this something? It, I think it's coming from a place of what wanting to be a good person, but you know, 
you got to you got to put some intelligence. In. So let's read it together and see 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 what they're talking about. We don't know anything about Balth, uh, uh Ruth Madeley's character, but a, a generation of disabled viewers will uh, know how she should be handled. Okay, so look, tell me the story, right? Tell me what what uh, what's going on. So. Melissa Parker, I don't know, are you, uh, uh, are you handicapped? Let, let, let me know. Uh, Ruth Madeley's casting Doctor Who is already a game-changing piece of disability representation. Again, uh, honestly, they were talking about... I, I mean, I'm going to prove myself wrong here, right? They were talking about having uh, uh, a wheelchair character in Deep Space Nine, and that was the early 90s, right? Uh, um, that was... Um, oh, Doctor Who tie-in, right? Uh, Grace, uh, what's her name? Grace, not Grace Jones. <laughs> From the TV movie, right? Uh, uh, Daphne Ashbrook. She played the character... Okay, so when they wrote up... They were doing the, the series Bible. There's a very good job, book called The Making of Star Trek Deep Space Nine, which is excellent. I remember. I, so uh, uh, when they were writing up the characters for that, one of them was supposed to be a wheelchair-bound ca character because of the, the gravity, and they only only in their room because they have the gravity right. Anyway, so they never use that character, but they use it for one episode of Deep Space Nine, and that character was played by Daphne Ashbrook. Okay, there you go. I thought I did talk to her eventually. Uh, but again, like... I don't, I don't know! I don't know, like, it, it's... it's uh, um, if it was, again, if it was now, talking about now much about, uh, yeah, okay. But now, really? There's, 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 there's you know, there's no representation of, of, uh, of, uh, uh handicap disabilities? Really? I, I don't think that's right. I don't think that's correct. Uh, ba uh the BAFTA nominee who was born with, uh, uh Spina Bifta and uses the wheelchair will appear as a character named Shirley Ann Bingham. And she was featured in the trailer for the sixth anniversary of the series. Well, because she was in years and years, right? And we know that Russell likes her. And it's just like a... Uh, I, that's what I thought. Eh? I Maybe... Yeah, probably, I'm probably wrong, right? I'm probably wrong. Uh, it was probably all about representation, okay? I did, see, this is how much I don't think handicapped, uh, uh, you know, uh, disability, non-representation is a thing. It didn't even occur to me when I saw her in the trailer. Went, oh, that's nice to disable people. No! I was like, oh, look, it's Ruth Madeley. Like, it didn't connect with talking like, really? Why is everything about identity? Uh, Madeley's performance throughout her career reveals that, uh, a simple truth. Being disabled is not a shorthand for pitiable. Well, okay. Again, look at Syl. Syl, I mean, he was a villain, but, you know, he was a powerful villain. Uh, whether a disabled mother fighting to keep her um, keep her newborn child on it uh, or a pioneering disability rights campaigner, her characters have all, uh, all have one tie that connects them all. They're, they are ordinary three-dimensional disabled women. Now, the mistake is you said disabled. The goal is to be ordinary three-dimensional women. Right or people, if you want to be actually be better, right? I don't know why you're focusing on her disability, but again, if you, I, mean, I don't know, like, <laughs> like, like, who doesn't like disabled people? Like, oh, fuck them, fucking okay, what? Like, what? I understand. I know. I, I, I. You can kind of convince me with black people. Okay, I, I know the Ku Klux Klan was a thing, right? I know racists are a thing. You can convince me. Of, you can't convince me. People hate handicapped people. Okay, you can't. Well, you can maybe if you show me some evidence. Um, but okay, okay. The uh, the sort of women seldom seen on screen who uh, remain ever present in our communities and are vibrant histories of our uh, and our culture. Now again. This is what I think, one of the main remits of what Ross Lee Davis is doing. I don't think he's just making Doctor Who. I mean, he's not. There's got to be a bunch of shows, we hope. Uh, I don't think he's taking Doctor Who to a new dimension, although that is, you know, one of the things. And he saw the BBC were going to do that, and they're going to try and do it, and he knew they were going to screw up. <laughs> Essentially! I think he just like, they're going to fuck this up, right? And I think he wanted to watch Doctor Who again. But I think also... He sees how awful entertainment has been, right? Entertainment has just been absolute uh, dire over the last five years, you know, because people can't talk about things that are important to them, the things they want to discuss, things that they feel are necessary for the, you know, uh, uh, the national discourse without being lecturing twats, right? And, you know, the reason is I don't think they thought through their, their worldviews that much. Okay, we're not really doing well on an overview of it. <laughs> all sorts of stuff so far. I'm halfway through the video. Ah, I'm late walking the dog, man. This is not going to be good. Uh, <laughs> I wonder how much I'm actually really going to get to. We'll find out. We'll find out. 
best laid plans, eh? Uh, there's a sort of... Okay, so... Uh, well, there's a sort of women seldom seen on our screen who remain ever prone in our committees... Too many bloody committees, you ask me. Uh, our vibrant histories and our culture. Uh, we are the generation... And I'm not saying handicapped people shouldn't be on committees! No! Just maybe not... All committees shouldn't be directed for handicapped people. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, we are a generation with the vision uh, to want to progress. No, every generation has been that, right? Every generation has wanted to be to progress and be progressive. The trouble is, we gave you a perfect fucking world, you idiot children. We gave you a world, a post-racist world. We actually did that, right? We achieved it by the 2000s. Nobody thought about it anymore. It was over, right? Yeah, yeah, it was, bonkers, but it was over. And then you found you had nothing to do and you, had something to, you needed something to rebel against, right? So you had to make up all new racism, right? So this it feels to me... That's what's going on here. Uh, uh, who knew things uh, could be better and couldn't, uh, but didn't see it in the media growing up. Uh, again, the media has to reflect the audience's inter it's entertaining or that audience will switch off the media. That is one of the absolute truths that we found over the last five years. Right, they didn't think we will switch off the media. You know, Disney didn't think they will, will, that everybody will switch off. Uh, Paramount thought, oh, Star Trek Discovery, everyone's gonna love that. Yeah, all the all the Trekkers because uh, they're idiots. They'll watch anything, and we'll get the normies too because they love women. Yeah, it's gonna be progressive. No, I, it, this is a disconnect you have with reality, right? And, and, and like, you know, the, the, there's quite a few of them that you that you your generation who wants to progress, vision to progress. Fuck off. Try and do as much progression as the uh, white male patriarchy did. You know, steam engine, ending slavery, all those little things. What? How did slavery end? Through the cotton gin, you fucking morals. Nothing else. It was the economic reality of not ha of being cheaper to have the pieces of wood knocked together than to keep a few uh, you know, a few uh, cotton gins of slaves to pick your cotton. That's why. Oh... Just the, yeah, the ignorance and the confidence. You know, <laughs> say in the same breath, it's breathtaking. Uh, the ignorance and confidence in their opinions they know nothing about. I, well, I get the same thing with my wife, though, as well. You know, like, sometimes I tell her, like, stuff um, stuff that's going on. Like, you know, like, uh, she says, well, you know, what, what do you mean? What's going to happen if you... Um, say things that the American government doesn't like in America. I, I don't know, well, it could be the FBI will come, come uh, you know, uh, uh, and, uh, and they said, well, who, who's going to come and arrest you? I'm like, well, the FBI. <laughs> that's, a, that's basically what's, what's been going on. They look at me and say, no! And again, complete ignorance. Complete ignorance and complete confidence. Maybe it's just a, uh, a general human thing rather than this generation, but it's complete ignorance and complete confidence. I mean, okay, not everything you say the government doesn't like will get, get you raided by the FBI, but the more prominent it is, that is going to happen, right? And they actually... I mean, we've seen all the Twitter files. Oh, you probably haven't. <laughs> Maybe have all the Twitter files, you know. Uh, um, they were going off the memers, for God's sake. Um... So they didn't see disability representation as children and teenagers, but the next generation will. No, your next generation, I'm going to watch fucking thing that you that you make because you make garbage because you don't know what you're doing and you're an arrogant, arrogant idiot. You know, um, so then a uh, picture of uh, Ruth Madeley apparently from Instagram. Uh, the refusal to be confined by stereotypes that have littered our history. Well, again... If you're saying it's a stereotype that wheelchair uh, people bound to wheelchairs are in wheelchairs, that's not really a stereotype. But I, I don't understand why. Why would you think somebody would be pathetic because they're in a wheelchair? I, I, I mean, what's wrong with you? <laughs> that just stopped me from. Wait a minute. What? I, I virtually nobody who's wheelchair bound is pathetic. It's completely the fucking opposite. Because they got to, you know, to have a life, you've got to push more because you've got a disability. This is so stupid, right? This is so stupid. Uh, a refusal to accept, accept discrimination. I, I don't think it's happening. Show me it. Uh, or receive wisdom about, uh, again, I'm very, very opinionated and strong in my opinions. 
I may do it as well. If it is happening, let me know. Really, let me know. I, I, I'm i not on board for discrimination, if that's it, but I'm not on board for, you know, uh, anti-discrimination where there's no discrimination in the first place. Uh, and the received wisdom means that to be disabled and the way they are fighting to replace limiting... What? I refuse to expect discrimination and uh, or receive wisdom about what it means to be disabled. What does it mean to be disabled? What again? It, what, what? Where? What, are you? Are you living in the nineteen fifties? What the hell? What's it mean to be disabled? Oh no, your life's over now. I mean, I watch. Uh, I love watching Mad Men, right? Uh, and so nineteen sixties. So the uh, the season three has one of the greatest uh, moments of all time when they uh, they have this this is big swanky uh, uh madison avenue uh, uh advertising company in the 60s right and they get bought out by an english company in in, in the in the third season uh and uh, uh they bring in the new manager and they're having a bit of a drunken party and one of the things they're advertising is a ride on lawnmower um <laughs> by john deere and so they're having a drunken party and one of the secretaries uh in between yeah, having sex with everybody uh, who, who wants to have sex with them uh is driving the lawnmower and goes wrong way and like goes over the the new executive foot right so so they're like well obviously his career's over well guess that was a 60s i don't understand what world are you living in oh handicapped people you can't do shit really really I, I don't understand. I, I do not understand what this person's coming from. And again, if it is like this, tell me. I think if it is like this, messed up, mate. Um, fine, to receive, it's to receive wisdom about what it means to be disabled. Well, certainly you got your prejudice about what it means to be disabled. And the way they are fighting to replace limiting notions of with something so much more huma uh, humanly compelling, uh, relatable and authentic. Uh, again, I don't know what you're talking about. I really, you're going to need to, uh, um, I think, back up your case. See, this is the trouble. People say bullshit, right? And they go, and they just expect you to swallow it. No! I don't think this is true at all, right? Uh, we don't know anything about Shirley Ann Bingham's, uh, uh, but the generation of Dissel viewers, how she will be handled. I don't think they do. I have to tell you, there is a big uh, 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 disabled community that loves Doctor Who, right? And always has been, right? Uh, she brings her own lived experience. Uh, well, uh, as Dr. Uh, Kirsty Lydiard of University of Sheffield states, well, firstly, okay, you've got a lot of strikes against you before you say whatever you're about to say. You are uh, a doctor in, in a university, uh, uh yeah, you know, universities have hardly helped improve the country. Would you say, or would you say, the uh, uh, injection of communism, transgenderism, uh, AI, and uh, uh, underage drag shows, which all starts, it all starts at, at you know, higher education. Would you say that's been, been, been for the better? I would say not. I would say not. Uh, Overeducated morals, mainly. Uh, and secondly, yeah, you know, if you're going to be a university professor. Don't get excited about being a Sheffield University <laughs> professor. At least give me some of Oxbridge, for God's sake. Uh, it's brilliant to see the wonderful Ruth Medley join Doctor Who, a disabled woman actor in a primetime role. Sadly, still a rarity. What percentage of the UK is, is, is disabled? I mean, is, it, is that a rarity too? I, I think you might be. And again, and again, I... I it, it, I don't like the idea of you representing disabled people as like helpless lumps. Oh, please help me. Have mercy. No, I don't like that either. Or invisibility. No, but like, I just don't think what you're saying here is real, right? That's basically it. I think you're fighting an invisible uh, 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 op yeah, oppression. Uh, she brings her own lived experience to the role, uh, which, uh, which is crucial towards the countering the tokenism. Okay, tokenism is the problem of the media, right? Star Trek Discovery is tokenism. Basically, everything Disney does is tokenism. Uh, uh, which means, uh, which is, uh, was it, crucial towards countering tokenism and offering audiences accurate portrayals of disability. Well, that's, that's, that's and again, the only, the, the, the only disabled character I can think of in, the, in, the, in recent years was Ruth Medley from years and years. Uh, and Ruth Medley as uh, Hebe and uh, the Colin Baker Doctor Who, which to me seemed 
absolutely about tokenism, right? It's 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 completely about. I I, I only listened to her first episode. I didn't buy the box set because she it just didn't work, right? It didn't then didn't, didn't do anything for me. Uh, but yeah, all, uh, offering audiences accurate portrayals of disability. Yeah, I'm hundred percent. But I don't know. Dr. Kirsty Lydiard, are, 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 are you an overeducated moron? Because you're talking like one, right? You're talking like one. That, that, that leads me to think you might, that, that's who you might be. Uh, so uh, it's important to, uh, important to the channel, lived experiences and the unique hopes and fears of a disabled person. Their motivations and methods are undoubtedly too nuanced and complex to, uh, to learn, uh, learn to teach. So you're saying... Uh, actors shouldn't be an actor, right? So uh, we should all we should burn uh, every copy of My Left Foot with da Daniel Day Lewis, right? Now, oh yeah, get rid of actors. Screw you. Oh, yeah. oh God, I hate that. Crippling up is a term commonly used to describe actors without the disability mimicking the characteristic. I, again, how many disabled actors do you have? If the number of roles outstrip the number of disabled actors or the quality of actor doesn't get up that high. I mean, look, you do well with, with uh, Ruth uh, Medley because she's a very good actor, right? But like, I don't know, like when you hire based on uh, based on identity, right? When you're hiring based on identity, uh, the only option, the only option ever is a lo lowering of standards. Uh, so it's, uh, is unjust and negates the impact of disabled experiences being ostracized other than malign. The only people I see ostracizing other than malign them is, is this person, right? Oh, man, man. Okay, this might not be. How long does this go on for? Okay, I've had enough. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. I can't. I can't anymore. God, I didn't realize how much this person was going to waffle. God in heaven. Dude, like I know nothing about her character. I just know I like her already. What? What if she's? A, what if she's like? Oh, I can't move. I'm a pathetic cunt, right? What? What if? What if she's gonna be like that? Oh no, no, she won't be stunning and brave then. Fine. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Oh God, let's not fuck off. Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg reveals the role she was in Doctor Who. The role she was in Doctor Who. So listen, Whoopi Goldberg is uh, uh, um, what what psycholo uh, psychologists call a dumb cunt, right? A dumb cunt. Now, why do I say she's a dumb cunt? Well, because she's a dumb cunt. But um, she, uh, uh, about a year ago, just over a year ago, she got banned from, she got uh, suspended from The View, I think probably with pay, even though, what difference? Got suspended from the View, uh, which is a the, the, one of the worst things in in, in, in the universe. Uh, not not being suspended from View, the the View, right? Because she was like, "Hey, howdy, John. The the Holocaust wasn't about race. It was just white people against white people." You 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 know there are black Jews, right? And and, and also you knew those naughty national socialists of Germany. Didn't like black people either, right? In fact, I would say, if you're a black Jew in Berlin in 1937, might not be the best time to be there, right? That might not be... Uh, uh, that might be a time you want to, uh, 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 you know, move, move on, right? Move on uh, move on, and go go somewhere else. So uh, she, so, yeah, she got, got in a lot of trouble for that because... Because they, they, people didn't want to. Uh, Disney didn't want to look, be uh, looked at like they're hypocrites, even though, obviously, they, they are hypocrites. So, uh uh, uh, so you know, they had to suspend her, and then she just did it again a couple of weeks ago. You ignorant, ignorant, dumb cunt. I mean, really? Oh, it's just white people against white people. Darling, come to Israel. Come to Israel. You'll find, uh, uh, you know, in your prejudiced view, you in your prejudiced, ignorant view, I have no doubt you believe Israel is uh, white and European, right? Completely white and European. no. In fact, Israel's like the United Nations. There's every skin colour in the bloody world over here. Yeah, and I'm not saying that as a moan. I'm saying that as a good thing, idiots. Uh, uh, right? There's every skin colour in the world. Uh, 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 we have black Jews. We have yellow Jews. We have... Oh, so stupid. But anyway, so now she wants to be in Doctor Who. She's not giving up on the who universe. Oh, please. Russell, give up on her. Give up on her. Whoopi Goldberg has been campaigning to join Doctor Who for years. Fuck off, Whoopi, if I may say so, on behalf of uh, 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 what Kanye would call the, the Jews uh, uh, and the human race. Fuck off, darling. 
uh, has been campaigning to join Doctor Who for years, and she has pitched to play a very important character in the series. The View co-host uh, is a super fan of the BBC science fiction series, having been uh, rumoured to be uh, as a contender to play the Doctor in the last seven years. Several years. No, she wasn't. <laughs> During a recent chat with Graham Norton of uh, Veteran Radio, she explained that committing to Doctor Who uh, isn't possible due to her busy schedule, but that doesn't mean... And also, not being offered. <laughs> Listen, I would commit to having constant sex with Scarlett Johansson. I would absolutely... Commit, but I can't. I'm too busy. I'm too... What's that, Scarlett? What's that? You, you've never offered... Don't, don't worry, darling. Don't, you will. You will. <laughs> uh, um, really? Like, no one's offering you, darling. Doesn't mean she isn't ruling out a guest role. I am actually surprised Russell D. didn't bring her in for one of the Christmas specials, right? That, that, it seems to be the sort of thing she would have done. I am busy, but if a random Doctor Who came along, I could do it, she said. I understand she could play Guinan. <laughs> it's Doctor Who as well. That will be interesting. <laughs> uh, I understand I'm not going to be the new black Doctor Who. No, Shuti Gatwa is, right? And, and who, again, can you just look at him as a human being, not as a black person? <laughs> and I'm not saying black people are not human beings. I'm just saying look at human beings as human bloody beings. Oh, it's, it's worse than having to do, deal with pronouns, isn't it? Uh, when Graham suggested... She could play somebody related to the Doctor. Would be said, uh, I th I could be uh, whose cousin? Uh, boo hoo. Okay, yeah. Well, that's what. You, yeah, boo hoo, boo hoo. Yeah, go go away, go away. Fine. Uh, uh, so that that was that. <laughs> we went over that. Uh, of course, the big news this week was this location filming. Right, lots of location filming. Kate left for Stewart in Newport. Uh, so this is, again, I was going to read the whole article, but I spent all my time time on Rio uh, Root. <laughs> Yeah, Ruth Medley. Listen, if I if I if I knew, could go back in time and say, ooh, in the future, in the in the in the in the near future, you are uh, 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 going to do a uh, a video for a podcast, and uh, you're going to talk about both Ruth Medley and Scarlett Johansson. Guess who's when you're going to spend the spend the time on? Right, it's got to be Scarlett Johansson. Got to be. Got to, no, no, Ruth Medley. Uh, fine. So Millie Gibson was there. Uh, the, the, the rumor is the, uh, the the idea is that she's somehow related to uh, Kate Leffridge Jim. I don't think that's the case. I think this is mid season. I think this is about episode five or six, uh, and this is probably not the first time they met, right? Uh, uh, and there was a woman there watched it. But anyway, we, we <laughs> this is why I love local newspapers. Uh, but we got uh, a better report here from uh, uh, what was this? The the Express. We, we got some better pictures. There you go. Uh, I like I like the jacket. Uh, uh, she looks a lot younger there, right? Than uh, uh, she has been. But that's it, right? Okay, so she is. And then she was in lots of jackets uh, because it was very cold. Fine, so that was... We had to nod to the big news of the week, right? The big, big news of the week. Uh, uh, this is something that actually has been on my mind quite a lot more. So it was... Uh, uh, reported about a couple of weeks ago that the animations are coming back. That was confirmed, but it's saying they're also doing colorizations for the 60th. Uh, I'm not sure how, how, how I felt about it, right? I'm not sure. Honestly, it's not something I felt that I particularly needed. If it was something on Disney+, Plus, I would watch it. I would check it out. I would review it. I'd be interested in it. But for me, I, I like it in black and white, right? I like it in black and white. When I look at the animations, I always go for the black and white version. Apparently, completely new, 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 new teamwork on it now. Uh, neither of the, of the previous teams. Uh, Colorizing the classic Doctor Who shouldn't be sacrilege. Uh, well, okay, here's why it feels like sacrilege, right? Because I, I come from the 80s. I come from the 80s at the dawn of colorization, and it was awful at the beginning, right? It was absolutely, absolutely awful at the beginning. Uh, uh, it took all the character... Um, uh, took all the character out of a movie. It was, it, it was just... Not very good, right? It was not very good. The, the the more recent stuff I've seen has been incredible. I mean, there's stuff people put on Twitter or on YouTube all the time. Absolutely incredible, right? But Steve O'Brien, he, he is up for it, right? He is up for this, right? To colorize or not to colorize, that is the question. It's a fault at the forefront of Doctor Who fans' minds at the moment. I would say, constantly, are they going to colorize an earthly child? Uh, probably. 
Uh, Arthur reports that the BBC are looking into uh, colorizing old black and white episodes of part of the sixth anniversary celebrations. But why now? If this idea had been floated 30 years ago, it would have been our role. Again, we just talked about the 80s. It was garbage, right? They just did complete and utter garbage. Uh, right? Uh, uh, such as the 1980s when uh, companies, uh, when company Color Systems Technology screen tested 10 minutes of footage of Orson Welles' monochrome masterpiece, Citizen Kane. Yeah, pro probably not, 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 not the best introduction to the te not technology. There was a, a similar uh, spluttering at there when the festive fave It's a Wonderful Life was, uh, uh, was, uh, life was given a digital paint job. Uh, when this, uh, with one of the surviving stars, Jimmy Hawkins, say, "I like the black and white version because it feels like it was shot, and that's what it's meant to be." The 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 depth of the black and white, uh, a lot of work work went into getting that look. That that is that is indeed correct. Of course, the technology was uh, the technology that was available then is uh, a universe away from uh, uh, a universe away from what's around now. Where some of those colorized films from the eighties look like uh, a child of the crayon has been working on it, uh, 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 working on uh, working with crayon on the negative. Recent colorization such as uh, the W, uh, the World War One footage from Peter Jackson's uh, "They Shall Not Grow Old." That's stunning. That is stunning. Okay, you're making a fair point. Uh, have been stunning in their verisimilitude. Oh, I'm so glad to see that spelled out because I always pronounce it wrongly. Uh, it's not just the technology. It seems to be... and it, I'm so glad I moved on from uh, Ruth Medley. Right? I'm so glad. That was just annoying me. Uh, when, uh, when it was announced that the... Uh, where was it? There seems to be... Uh, but, uh, it's, but it's not just the technology. It seems to be acceptance now that these colorized versions won't oust or eclipse the black and white originals. Well, also, again, you, you, you're dealing with 80s attitudes, right? Like... Anybody growing up in the 80s doesn't like nuclear energy. We remember Chernobyl. We remember the Cold War. We remember being scared of nuclear energy. Now it's the cleanest, perhaps the safest form of uh, uh, energy, energy production in the world. Of course, you know, the, you know the, the green people don't like it. But, you know, that's basically because that might, make, that might actually give everybody what they want. When I announced that Gold will be colorizing two episodes a half, half hour, there was barely a whiff of outrage from the comedian's fan base. Okay, if you want to see the blood donor or 12 angry men in the original grey tones, they're not going away. But when there's a chance that some... I, actually, I, that actually interests me, because not being a Hancock fan, super fan, I'll be like, oh, I, I would watch that. But if... Uh, I think Paul Merton did uh, reconstructs as well, which I thought were, were somewhat better. But if uh, if there's a chance that some monochrome pro phobes might, uh, might give these freshly painted episodes a try, then surely it's worth a shot. Uh, yeah, I agree. Those black and white Doctor Who stories that have been around, uh, that we now have, uh, that, that yeah, the Doctor Who stories that we have now already far, far from the versions that we were put out with. Ah, those black and white Doctor Who stories that we have now are already far from the versions that are put out on VHS in the 1990s. No software can restore the original look, though those smudgy old telly recordings, well, I guess so. I can't. I I think it's just trying to make it look as good as possible in, in today's standards of TV. I mean, of TV equipment, I should say. With our uh, with our televisions getting bigger and the resolution becoming sharper, the I mean, yeah, you look at Deep Space Nine, right? On, on a big uh, on a like a uh, fifty inch screen, it looks does look very good, right? It really needs to be uh, uh, upgraded. Uh, becoming sharper, these vintage episodes of the sixties are beginning to look more uh, more anachronistic. Like listening to a scratchy Nog uh, Nog Cow seventy eight next to Kendrick Lamar's latest, uh, uh, and difficult to find any black and white movie or TV show on Netflix or Britbox uh, uh, or or even Britbox seems wary. While it comes, uh, uh, well, with plenty of unique TV. It, ha uh, it has precious few non color series. Uh, in the vast archive. Okay. So they're saying it's going to make it more acceptable, right? Oh, God, how long is this going off? This goes off too long as well! Uh, do, 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 do. What's this? Who's Humphreys? Humphreys, Humphreys, Humphreys. Uh, SVS Resources and, uh, and Stuart Humphreys. Who was Stuart Humphreys? Uh, not that colorization black and white is entirely new. The John Pertwee episode. Okay, fine. 
Yeah, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. Okay, they're just going to oh, You made your point. What are you, paid by the letter? Enough already. Let's go to the next story. Next story is funny. Next story is funny. Uh, uh, the one who got away didn't get away. <laughs> Talk to Star. Uh, uh, Talk to Star's new show, Acts Despite. Season 2 filming completed. That is bad. So, Toast and Cold, sadly, got uh, shafted in the great big axing of uh, 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 cutting of, of HBO Max content. Uh, this show, yeah. So, they actually... Was it AMC? I thought I thought that it was it was on HBO Max. Okay, I guess AMC's doing it. Oh, isn't AMC owned by... It, you can't, it's so complicated, all these things. Anyway, so they filmed... They started shooting his show, and then they realized, oh... Nobody wants to watch it. Nobody watched it. Nobody liked it. Nobody wants to watch it. And so they cast it. If only, if only our American cousins could have found some way of educating us poor, uh, 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 you know, poor, silly English people. We could have cancelled uh, Jodie Whittaker's Doctor Who after, you know, the second episode. That would have... Um, can, what? Can you imagine the heart? The heart I, that would that would have uh, that would that, that would have avoided. You know, I remember when the last Jedi came out, and there was a movement to remake. The Last Jedi, right? Everyone, oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, absolutely. No, 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 we'll never do that. Could you imagine how much better a state Star Wars would be in and Disney would be in now if they had done that? Could you imagine? Uh, uh, I cannot. Because it'll be it's quite, it'll be quite a lot better. Fine. Uh, that was the week that was, baby. That was the week that was. A, a, a splattering of eclectic articles from uh, from the past week. Uh, uh, may, mostly Ruth Medley. <laughs> okay, which is just utter bollocks. Utter bollocks. Uh, what else can you expect from the mainstream media? My name is Leela Beckett, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop.